Welcome to Life Transformation, a weekly podcast from Sunrise Church in Surrey, British Columbia. Stay tuned to hear inspiring messages and teachings, giving you hope and purpose, leading you to a life-changing relationship with Jesus as you follow Him. I'm really excited today because um, our special guest speaker, he's joining us uh, via video, Dr. Steve Brown, who is the president of Arrow Leadership. Uh, how many have heard of Arrow Leadership? Hands up. Have you ever heard of them? Uh, they're an interdenominational leadership program that's in, I don't know, 25 countries, been going for 30 years. Um, both my wife and I had the privilege of being graduates from the Arrow Leadership program, and it's fantastic. So he has a sermon for us today called Four Questions at the Gate of a New Year. Four Questions at the Gate of a New Year. Let me pray before we watch this today. Father, I pray our hearts to be open to the very things that Dr. Brown is going to bring us. That is, he's prepared uh, this message for us, Lord, that our hearts would not only be open, but respond to the questions that are put before us today, and that we'd be moved closer towards you to ultimately lead more people to you, Lord, because that's your call through us. So God, open our hearts, open our minds uh, to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, keep your eyes on the screen. Sunrise Church, it is a joy and privilege to be with you today and to share this message with you. I so appreciate Pastor Chris and Sherry and their friendship and their example and uh, just the joy of being able to journey with them through the Aero Leadership Program several years back. For me, this first week or so after Christmas is bittersweet. It's bittersweet because there's been this anticipation that's been for months Uh, Going back to Costco in July when they first put out their Christmas stuff on the store shelves and fast forward to now and it's done. The memories have been made and there's a lot of stuff to put away. Uh, Another reason why this week is bittersweet for me is because it's the sudden end of Christmas songs and Christmas music. Um, For some of you, there may be songs that you have heard so many times in the last few weeks, you don't want to hear them ever again. And one of the songs that triggers me is The Little Drummer Boy. Uh, Back in grade six, I was to take part in our Christmas assembly at my school. And in front of several hundred students, I was to stand up and do a duet with my friend Brad of The Little Drummer Boy. And I got up in front of my whole school and I got through the first line of The Little Drummer Boy and everything went blank. I couldn't remember anything except Pahrumpa Pum Pum, which I did through the whole first verse. Pahrumpa Pum Pum all the way through the first verse until Brad picked up the second verse. And it was a scarring moment for me. And every time I hear that song now, it brings back that memory. Maybe you have songs that you love, and you're not going to hear them again maybe until next Christmas. One of the songs I love is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. When you look at the words to that song, you see that the words are from a distressed people, a people who are uh, in despair, in darkness, crying out that Emmanuel, that God would be with them. And they rejoice with anticipation that God is coming to be in their midst. Well, in a world where there is currently still so much difficulty and distress and devastation in some places and darkness and despair, Emmanuel, this truth that God is with us, isn't just good news, it's the best news we can get. We've been celebrating through this season that through Jesus, God is with us, not just 2,000 years ago, but that God is with us today, tomorrow, and to the very end of the age. Jesus is the game changer for you, for me, for our world. John Stott, a English pastor and theologian, shares a quote that I just love. He says that we may talk about Alexander the Great, or Charles the Great, or Napoleon the Great, but not Jesus the Great. Stott's quote says that Jesus is not the Great. He is the only. He has no rival. He has no successor. And Jesus is the only. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. Only Jesus is God in the flesh. 
Only Jesus conquered the sin and overcame the grave. Only through Jesus are you rescued and redeemed. Only through Jesus are you made truly alive and set free. Only in Jesus can you find deep contentment and full completion. Only in Jesus can you live with enough strength for today and enough courage for tomorrow. Only with Jesus is the real hope for miraculous change in us, in others, and in our world. Only with Jesus can you look toward an inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. And only at the name of Jesus will every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. After a year where many have faced chaos and challenge and complexity and change and conflict, there is still good news. And it's not good news about something. It's good news about someone, and that's Jesus. As we stand at the gate of a new year, I want to share with you four questions that I believe are going to point you toward Jesus. And they're questions that you may need today or further along in the year. The first question is this, where will your eyes be focused? As you look to a new year, where are your eyes going to focus? Two years ago, my wife Lee and I entered the gate of a new year with plans and hopes for a new year and a new decade. But within a few days of the new year, everything started to go sideways. Lee was doing a number of medical tests, and all those tests were pointing toward cancer, breast cancer. And if there's a word that starts with C besides COVID that can get your mind going in a million different directions is the word cancer. In Hebrews chapter 12, a metaphor of a race is used to describe life. We are to run with perseverance the race marked out for us, Hebrews 12 verse 1 says. And Lee and I found ourselves in the midst of COVID running a very challenging race, which seemed completely uphill as we journeyed through surgery and chemotherapy and radiation. It was a year, two years, we couldn't forget. We couldn't imagine. And I'm thrilled to share with you now that we've come through almost all of that. By God's grace and the encouragement of a lot of people, but the point of this verse in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, as we run this race marked out for us with perseverance, is where we keep our eyes focused. We're to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Keeping your eyes focused on Jesus, whatever the circumstances, is incredibly important. My go-to over the last two years is another verse that's very, very similar to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The verse, Psalm 16, verse 8, says this. David writes, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not stumble. Do you see how close those two verses are? Hebrews 12 says to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And then Psalm 16, verse 8 says, I will always keep my eyes on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not stumble. If you unpack that verse, we're reminded that God is with us. Uh, God is with David. He's at David's right hand. And David's job is to keep his eyes focused on the Lord who is at his right hand. By doing that, it says you will not stumble. Now, if you keep your eyes focused on the Lord at your right hand, you're no longer looking ahead. You're actually looking to the side to the Lord. And he is able to look ahead into the future to look at the wind and the waves that might be coming. So the first question for you is where will your eyes be focused in 2022? We have three more questions, but I want to pray right now just about this question. So join me in this simple prayer to help focus your eyes on Jesus. Lord, whatever challenges may come or whoever my circumstances may change for better or for worse, 
Help me to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. The second question is this. Who will you walk with? Who will you walk with in 2022? From the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus gathered around himself a community. Jesus had his inner circle of three, his core group of 12, and his bigger community of 72. Jesus lived, loved, served, and suffered in the context of community. We see this even in Jesus' most difficult moment. In the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was on the verge of facing this crucible moment at the cross, he didn't go alone. He actually brought his inner circle of three with him. And you might wonder, why would he bring those three with him? Because up until this point, they had misunderstood so much. They had fallen short so far. They had not really understood what Jesus was all about. They were slow learners at the best of times. But he chose to bring them with him in his most difficult moment. And they fell asleep multiple times. And I've asked myself, why? Why did Jesus bring them? And one of the reasons why I believe Jesus brought the three with him is because he wanted to model for you and me one day that even when it's hard, you lean into community rather than out of community. And Jesus modeled leaning into community even when the community wasn't perfect. And by the way, there is no perfect community. The last couple of years could be termed the years of disconnection. And whether involuntarily or voluntarily, so many of us have gotten disconnected from key relationships in our lives. Maybe it's family we haven't been able to see or friends who've been so far away we haven't been able to connect with them. Or maybe it's being disconnected from our local church. The consequences of being disconnected are very real and very harsh. COVID has reaped destruction around the world, but has reminded us as well of our deep need and longing for relationship and community. And following Jesus' example, we need to live, love, serve, and suffer in the context of community, even when the community is imperfect and no community is perfect. So who do you need to lean into in 2022? Is it your local church? Is it to your family, your extended family? Is it a a Bible study or a mentoring group that you need to be part of? Um, Take inventory of your friendships. Who are the friends that are sharpening you and making you better? And who are the friends who aren't? Who are you going to spend more time with in 2022? We have more, two more questions to go, but I want again to pause and to pray about this question, who you're going to journey with. So join me in prayer for a moment. Lord, I know I cannot walk alone. Instead, I want to follow Jesus' example and lean into community, even imperfect community. Help me to connect with community more deeply in the year ahead. Well, question number three is, how are you going to use your towel? In every room Jesus entered, He was the most powerful person in that room. I don't know if you've ever been in a room with a powerful person. Most of the time, the powerful people in a room expect to be served and catered to. Yet, Mark chapter 10, verse 45 says that the most powerful person to ever walk this planet didn't come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. In another passage, in John 13, we find a shocking sight. We see Jesus on his knees, towel in hand, serving. It's Jesus' last supper. He's with the disciples, including the disciple who is going to shortly thereafter betray him. And in verse 3 of chapter 13 of the Gospel of John, it says this, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he'd come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash 
the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. A little bit later in verse 12, it says, when he'd finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that's what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash each other's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. On his knees, a towel in one hand, a dirty foot in the other, we see the King of Kings modeling radical service. And he longs for you and I to follow suit. Service flows out of love. It's grounded in humility. And it's about loving others in practical ways where we will not receive the direct benefit. So let me ask you, how might you use your towel in the coming year? How could your towel or your service demonstrate God's love, humility, and service to your family, your extended family, your neighbors, the people you work alongside, the student next door to your locker, your local school, your local community, your church? We have one question to go, but please join me in this prayer about this third question. How will you use your towel? Let me pray. Lord, thank you for your example in radical service. Thank you for creating me for something bigger than myself. Guide me in loving others in practical ways in the year ahead. Well, the fourth question is this. How will you approach the well? In John chapter 4, Jesus had been traveling. He's tired and thirsty, and he comes to a well, and a woman comes along. And a conversation unfolds, and we see Jesus take this ordinary circumstance and bring a life-changing, extraordinary encounter. Jesus shows us the way. Jesus wasn't just civil, he was kind. And we are in a day and age where so many things are not civil. They are nasty and mean. And we have this opportunity when we come across somebody in the middle of our day to simply be nice and kind, which is a novelty in our day and age. Jesus also listened. If anyone had the right to lead a one-way conversation, it was Jesus. Yet here he is carefully listening to the woman at the well. Jesus also sees. He sees past the outward facade of this woman, and he sees what's really going on inside her heart, her deep need to belong, to not live in shame, to be uh, healthy in her relationships, to be loved. Jesus, this Jewish rabbi, breaks down barriers and he builds bridges. He was supposed to steer well clear of Samaria, to steer well clear of a Samaritan woman, and to steer well clear of a Samaritan woman with a history and relationship baggage and all sorts of challenges. But here is Jesus building bridges, breaking down barriers, and pointing her toward hope. Jesus does not get sidetracked. He keeps the main thing the main thing. Jesus focused on seeking and saving the lost in his encounter with the woman at the well. He made an ordinary encounter into something extraordinary. And that begs the question of us, how are we going to respond at the wells that we're at as we talk metaphorically, whether that's in your front yard at home? whether that's on the bus or by your locker at school, if that's with colleagues at lunch or on the sidelines of your kid's game. Follow, following Jesus' lead, you and I have the awesome privilege and responsibility to point people to hope to Jesus. So one final prayer. As you reflect on how are you going to approach the well in your life, let me pray. Lord, in the comings and goings of ordinary moments each day, may I always be ready with kindness in both word and deed to share the hope that I have in you. Is there one of these four questions 
that you need to hang on to, to reflect more on? Where are your eyes going to be focused was question number one. Who are you going to be walking with in 2022 was question number two. How will you use your towel? Question number three. And then how will you approach the well is question number four. As we stand at the gate of a new year, I pray that one of those questions, or maybe all of them, are going to be helpful in guiding you ahead in this new year. And I want to close with a story that I share always at this time of year. It's inspired by my grandparents and a piece of artwork that hung in their home for many, many years. The artwork was a poem by Minnie Haskins called God Knows. I discovered later on that this poem was, the story goes, found by a young Princess Elizabeth way back in 1939. And she was so taken by this poem that she gave it to her father, King George. And in his Christmas address to the Commonwealth countries, he shared this message of hope in the midst of the start of a world war. And he shared from the poem a few verses. And here's what he read. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be better than light and safer than a known way. As you enter into the unknown of 2022, you can put your hand into the hand of God. And that is safer than any known way. King George finished his message, and I will finish this message with his words. May the almighty hand of God guide and uphold us all. Some real good questions to think about today and in the next week as we stand at the gate on the precipice of a new year. And I want to pray for us before we start in worship that whatever God wants to bring by his Holy Spirit to our hearts and minds would come to our hearts and minds even as we leave this place. So why don't you stand with me as we pray. Father, as we've gone on a journey even this morning in your presence, as we've gone on a journey in in your word reflecting on these questions, Father, I pray for each person here and each person who's joining us online. Lord, I pray today that we'd be considering where we fix our eyes. And the fact, Lord, that like David, when when we set our eyes on Jesus, who's at our right hand, he is taking care of the future. He is looking into the future. Lord, as we think about who we will walk with, Father God, we thank you that you've given us this community at sunrise and the large, but you've given us the smaller, and then you've given us other people. We pray, Father God, we would choose wisely to walk with those because, Lord, it says in Proverbs, when we walk with the wise, we become wiser still. But we also consider how will we use our towel Jesus, the King of the universe, the sovereign God over all creation, stooped down and served. Lord, may we not miss the opportunities to be like Jesus, to humble ourselves and to serve in this year ahead. But Lord, maybe for us, the last question is what stands out. Lord, when we meet people at the well, how are we going to share the gospel, share our lives? How are we going to share the very hope that you've put in us? Lord, in these moments now, I pray by your spirit, you would just quicken these questions to our heart and mind. Lord, that we may fix our eyes on Jesus. Lord, that may we be people that would stoop like Jesus, knowing that God had put all things in his hand, and yet he served. Knowing that, that he was led into Samaria, into that way to meet that person. God, may we be sensitive to your leading and guiding as we step into this new year. May this week be be full of reflections, Lord, as we will move forward into the things that you have for us. We pray, Father God, that you come by your spirit now and just press on to us the very things that you're calling us to do in this new year. And Lord, may we take the steps and answer the questions that will put us better on your path for what you have for us in the name of Jesus. And come on, someone say amen. 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 just been listening to Life Transformation, 
a weekly podcast of life-changing messages, giving you hope and purpose. If you would like prayer or more resources to a better you, connect with us on our website, sunrise.ca, or follow us on Instagram at sunrisechurchbc.com.